couple of weeks ago, this advert for Arteza Polymer Clay popped up on my Facebook newsfeed. I've heard that Arteza had a good reputation, so I thought I'd investigate further. The pack contains 42 blocks of non-toxic polymer clay in a vivid spectrum of colours, along with 5 modelling tools and a selection of jewel refinings and fixings, all for £26.99 including post and packaging. What a bargain, or is it? So I placed my order and a couple of days later it arrived in the post. Before I go any further, I must state that this isn't sponsored, I have bought this myself so I can give you a honest review. It came via Amazon and unfortunately it wasn't packed very well and the box did receive a little damage, but the contents fortunately didn't. On opening it up, the first thing you see is this pack of sculpting tools. They are really cheap and quite poor quality. They're similar to the sort of thing you can buy in a pound shop. They're okay for beginners, but if you're serious about working with polymer clay, you'll have your own favourite tools. The next thing is this little bag of jewellery fixing and findings, which include charm hangers. These have an arrow head on them, so when it's embedded into the clay it's more secure. There's a few sets of earring wires. some eye pins, a hair clip, a badge back, a ring, a key ring, and some other bits and pieces. Again, not top quality, but good to practice with. The instructions on the packaging state to bake at 325 degrees Fahrenheit, or 163 degrees centigrade for between 15 and 30 minutes. This seems very high for polymer clay when you consider that Fimo bakes at just 230 degrees Fahrenheit or 110 degrees Celsius, more than 50 degrees lower than the Arteza clay. The first thing you notice about the blocks is that they are quite small, especially when you put them at the side of a block of Fimo. Although the block of Arteza clay looks very small, it's actually half the size of a block of Fimo at 1 ounce, or 28 gram, where the Fimo is 2 ounce, or 56 grams. The colours include bubble bath pink, a vibrant lime yellow, bumblebee yellow, parakeet green, Cyan Blue, Hot Pink, Fresh Green, Turtle Green, Lavender, Bright Blue, Honey, Denim Blue, Punch Pink, Fuchsia, Royal Blue, Apricot, Lilac, Lemon Yellow, Cadmium Orange, Bubblegum Pink, Zinc White, Night Sky Blue, Orange, Basil Green, Burnt Umber, Copper, Pale Green, Emerald Green, Blush Pink, Sunset Yellow, Autumn Red, Elephant Grey, Tomato Red, Titanium white, red, peach, noir, olive green, 
Dolphin Grey, Milk Chocolate, Gold, and Dark Blue. So there's really a good selection of colours there, including a couple of metallics. Now let's talk about the price. Bearing in mind that the blocks of Arteza clay are half the size of a block of Fimo. Currently, a 2 ounce block of Fimo at Hobbycraft is £2.75. The Arteza blocks work out at 65p a block, so for 2 ounce that would be £1.30, less than half the price of Fimo. And that's not taken into account the sculpting tools, finding and the postage and packaging. If we work it out per kilo, the Arteza clay comes out at £22.95 per kilo and the Fimo at £48.27. So there's a huge difference in price, but is there a huge difference in quality? Well let's crack open a block and see. The first thing I notice is it feels slightly sticky. It's quite soft straight out of the packet and it feels like it will be quite easy to condition. So I'll take a few minutes to condition the clay and I'll come back to you when I've done it. For the sake of fairness I've rolled out half a pack of Fimo and a full pack of Arteza clay. And as you can see they're more or less the same size. In a previous video, and I'll pop a link to it up there, I tested out Sculpey 3 for strength, along with some other clays, and I'm going to carry out the same test with this. So firstly, I roll it out onto the thickest setting of my pasta machine, and cut out a couple of circles. One I will leave raw so we can see if there's any colour difference between the baked and unbaked clay. And I'm going to roll it through the pasta machine again, and this time on the thinnest setting. I'm also going to make a spring to see how well it holds its shape. I'll bake these at the specified temperature of 163 degrees C for 15 minutes. Well, we've had a bit of a disaster. I was a little bit concerned at the temperature that the Arteza clay bakes at, being a third higher than Fimo. So I wouldn't recommend mixing the clays in a project with having such different baking temperatures. However, I'm not sure you can make this out, but these have burnt. They were baked on baking parchment on a tile, and the temperature was checked on a separate oven thermometer. They were baked quite low down on my toaster oven, and I really should have tented them. However, I think they still would have burned. Strangely, this was baked right at the side of them and hasn't burnt at all. I'm going to test how flexible they are. And as you can clearly see on this thin one, it's really quite flexible. I can just about get a stretch fracture by folding it in half, and it does tear quite easily at this thickness. The thicker piece has quite a good bit of flexibility too, and it's quite tough. I can get some stress fractures, but they disappear when it's bent back. And it won't tear. The little spring has plenty of bounce back and compresses quite well. There is a little colour change between the baked and unbaked pieces but that's mainly due to the fact that the baked pieces have scorched a little. Overall, I think it's a really good clay, especially for beginners or anyone wanting to try their hand at polymer clay and not wanting to splash out too much. It's cheap, easy to condition, comes in a good range of usable colours, and there's a good set of basic tools. It's easy to sculpt with, although I would say it's a little bit softer than Fimo when sculpting. One or two of the colours were a little bit sticky. The clay is supposed to be non-staining, but I did find the dark green stain my hands very badly, and it was difficult to get off. I normally use a household cleaner to get Fimo stains off my hands, but even that wouldn't shift the green. I had to do a fair bit of scrubbing to get my hands clean. 
As for what it's like to work with, I made this, which incidentally was baked at the same time as the test pieces. There is a little bit of scorching right at the top, but that was close to the elements of my toaster oven. I would definitely use a full size oven and tent my pieces with aluminium foil in the future. The colours have remained pretty much the same as when it was unbaked. It's easy and enjoyable to work with. One thing to remember is that this still needs conditioning well, even though it's a softer clay. Would I recommend this polymer clay? Yes I would, especially for a beginner or someone working on a tight budget. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you have, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel to see all my future uploads. Thanks for watching.